It is cheating because you have the, the, the boxes. And sometimes, it'll go over the other direction. Oh, squirrel! This video may not pertain to most of you, um, but I got an XR150, love riding it, and I just kind of want to get a feel for the, um, see there's a new demand for these bikes and video content, and uh, I'm going to put it up against, so I had a couple options, I have a 450 here, could have taken, uh, but what I mostly ride over here, guys, is a 701 Husky Long Range Steering Stabilizer dialed in, um, beast of a bike navigation all that good stuff however it's a handful it's like 75 horsepower out of a single cylinder it's pretty lightweight this is long range so you got i think three and a half gallons in the front three in the back so you're six six and a half gallon range uh killer bike dialed awesome but it's it's uh honestly the most of what we're doing we try to get in the really tight trails the small trails so i'm gonna risk it and uh, I always take that bike. I'm going to risk it and take this whole 150, which weighs next to nothing. Rue, in her proper etiquette, poops about 300 times a day, pees everywhere. She has no manners. We're going to mix it up a little bit, do something different. And uh, I'm going to put this 150 against Ed's 2023 Tenere. And obviously, he's going to have more power on the freeway. It's not really concerned about. I kind of more or less want to see how it does in the trails. Uh, so stick with us and be something kind of a little bit different, a little bit fun. The one thing is the, um, I think the carbs plugged. Oh, God, the carbs plugged because or not or jet, because this gas I've had in it since I bought it new, and I don't. I spend several months. I put some sea foam in it uh, to see if it'll kind of clear up, but it, it's kind of like I don't know. Feels a little lean at idle. I think the maybe the air idle may be plugged, but 106 miles gonna go meet up with ed and put some gas in this thing hopefully get a chicken fried steak dogs something wrong with the dog she's like a cattle dog of some sort so you can hear it idling low probably shut off in a second here there it goes um yeah i my plan is just to run the life out of it and uh either do one of two things blow it up or clear it out or clear it out and then blow it up dude this dog's out of control here we go cool. and see what's funny is I've got probably come on baby where are you I probably got uh, 60 pounds of of gear on the back and it doesn't bottom out surprisingly I think this thing has I had to check the specs I think it has like 12 horsepower, something pathetic like that, but it does good. So check it out. Here we go. I mean, for what it is, for what it is, it's not really that, it's not that bad. I first got interested in the 150 when I rented these in Mexico with my buddy Alex. We went all over the place. Sorry. Uh, we went all over the place, doubled up with our wives, took them down rocky trails, ran from dogs. It was just, they just went everywhere. And then I knew it was meant to be and bought one. One of my best buddies, well, no, he's my best buddy. I'm going to give him that. Uh, Ed with uh, Slow Eddie's Motorcycle Adventure. Give him a follow on YouTube. He is a gangster and he's doing his own little video right now. Amazing, amazing guy. Awesome, awesome dude. And he's just great, so. Hey. <laughs> it's slow. You know what I always say? Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> Do you see my tank? Oh, that's like Yeah, it's like covered in metal shavings. Look at the tank. Oh, that just happened? Oh, yeah, this thing's getting wrecked. Look at it. Like literal metal shavings. No, it's like welding slap. I'm pulling on him, as you can see, right now. Like, obviously the 150 is just really strong. He's struggling to keep up. 
Yeah. I'm doing 52. I don't know what gear I'm in. Oh, well, I got this. 55? This is fine. I, this is totally fine, dude. Right? All right. Not bad. I mean, I'm like 100% pinned right now. 70 miles. You know, if I used one gallon, I would not be happy with that efficiency. However, it was pinned. It was pinned for a long ways. I was fighting some wind there for sure. I was. T I had it wide open for. This is a half an hour probably. Well, not too good. 70 miles a gallon. I definitely need some wider pegs because they're tiny. Bar risers. Change the gearing up a little bit. Feels pretty good though. Um, we had a 50% chance of rain and it rained. It rained. It was cold and it was like 30, like, like minus 20 <laughs> degrees on the mountain. There was a snowstorm. Freaking, yeah, it was gnarly. So we got a hotel because we're, we're a bunch of Yeah, the Huckleberry Inn. We had pizza. Dude, that crow is huge. And we had a big giant omelet. Um, Ed saw a donut that reminded him of his wife <laughs> this morning. Uh, what do you think about riding the XR yesterday when you hopped on it compared to your 700? <laughs> okay, dude. I don't know why everyone has a tendency to go for the big giant adventure bikes. I mean, look, I'm on a T7, so I'm on a middleweight bike and I thought I was doing okay. Um, after riding that XR, I'm selling a T7 and I'm getting an, an XR 150L. It's effortless fun on the trail. You know what I just realized too? Your bike is almost twice the weight of that bike. Cause that's like two, I think 240, 250, and you're, well no, you're 450, so it's 200 pounds heavier. Then I got on Ed's bike and realized that, like Ed's bike is so much work it's actually work to ride and work to keep in a straight line. This is like you forget you're riding a motorcycle and it just goes. When I'm riding that bike, the T7, I feel like I have a life meter and it's like slowly Shorter. going down. When I got on the 150, I felt like I was actually like getting... Like more like Mortal Kombat. I was, yeah, like I was like energized. Like yeah. punch out, you know, when you get the life meter and it goes up. Yeah, finish him! Mm, they don't do that in punch out. Punch out? No. But uh, that bike is rad. The main jet is lean for sure because it'll bog out if you give it a if you crack the throttle. Um, yeah, I think the next ride will be bar risers, the pegs. These pegs are ridiculous. Uh, bar risers, pegs, and sprockets. But we're gonna continue the rest of our journey and get this in some nice nice weather because they got pretty nice yesterday. So looking forward to it. All right, so you see how much work that was. Check this out. <laughs> that didn't work out for me. <laughs> Whoop, mm. sliding. A little too cocky there. Hold on. <laughs> Needs more. P that gearing has got to change in first. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> this bike, these tires are actually really good, but they do not like that slimy stuff, man. Wow. Oh no, I don't want to go through this. How did we just stumble upon this place? Wow. Holy cow, this is cool. Taking so, why are you going, taking so long? Oh, pop a wheelie. Woo! Check me out, boy. There's nobody back here. There's some nice camp spots. Oh, tree! Oh. Ooh, it looks pretty grimy down there. Why don't you just turn it around? Like, just physically turn the bike around. Oh! Oh! That didn't work. Ha! <laughs> this thing is crazy. I'm just like going down little walking trails. <laughs> you want a hand? I kind of want to lay this over just to see what it's like to pick it back up. So here, we're going to witness Ed. He didn't. He actually did this on purpose to um, show you guys that it really isn't that much harder to pick that up versus this. Don't blow your butthole out, dude. Put down low. Mm-hmm. Like that. Okay. Huh? Sometimes they go too far over and go the other way. <laughs> okay, so let me see this. I just don't want to break anything. Well, I mean, I guess I don't really care, but... Let me just move my mirror here. 
<laughs> That's okay. Yours or mine? Okay, so there's that. She's down. Oh, it's definitely easier and faster. <laughs> I will drink a water. I'm a little thirsty just from watching you do that. I remember doing that. That's not fun. I'm not sure what happened there. You, I, you just fell. It happens. All right, Ed's taking us in the uh, expert area here, so we're gonna really see how this XR150 does. I think it's gonna do amazing. Wow. Whoa, oh, oh, shit! All right, I got this. Wow. <clears throat> All right, all right. I see. Yeah. I'm good. I just uh, try not. I don't want to get a pinch flat. There's a lot of sharp rocks. This is cool, though. I could see this bike being something that opens the door for people who want to adventure. To, to do this where they could go buy a brand new reliable bike and get out here on the trail and do these things for really cheap a lot of people think oh adventure bike you need a <coughs> they always think the KTM or the Africa Twin or whatever or the G BMW where you're buying a used bike but you're still spending you know six to ten grand for a bike at least wow <laughs> so cool we should just, I wonder if, can you fish off the dock? Just walk down and fish off the dock? Yeah. Let's just do that. Let's get... I mean, it's, it's really shallow right there. Or are there some other spots we can cast off? Or other docks around the lake, I wonder? This guy's got it figured out. He's taking a nap. I don't live in Portland. Portland sucks. It, it used to be really neat, but I'm going to be straight up. It's, it's garbage right now. It's been hot garbage for a few years. This is what Oregon is. Um... People always associate Oregon with Portland, but we have, uh, we have, we're only, we're only about a half an hour from my house and about 45 minutes from the shop right now, and you'll see a bit of what it's like. This is, this is Oregon at its finest, obviously not with the temperature, but I still appreciate the beauty, the blue skies, the, the, the trees, and honestly a little bit of uh, moisture on the ground is nice because we're not going to have dust out here. You could get a little bit of mud and have a nice little mix of terrain. Can we go down there by the dam? Where the, where the, yeah, yeah. There is? Oh, bummer. Just about home. I logged about a 300, I think it was 340 miles overall. There's definitely a spot for this bike in the motorcycle world. If you want to get into doing the kind of stuff that we just did, some asphalt, some trails, back roads. Um, this thing will really go anywhere. And again, not everybody's gonna be carrying 70 pounds worth of weight on the back like I am right now. I'm about 180 pounds with my gear. I'm probably probably 200 pounds with my gear plus 70 pounds of equipment. So I figure 270 pounds or so. Never had an issue with gas. Uh, just a few things to address. The cold start. Cold starts are a problem for me where I'm at. Rear shock needs to be better damping, maybe a little bit softer. Bar risers and pegs and jetting and sprockets. So very minimal. And again, that's coming from somebody who knows knows uh, what needs to be done and how easy it is to do those things. 90% of people are probably going to hop on this bike and be like, this is the best thing ever. The adventure bike scene, for some reason, everybody wants a big motorcycle. And I did it too. That's like what you do. You get the big things. You get the big motorcycles. And all you're doing is spending so much time keeping them vertical and keeping them upright. And your arms and shoulders get really fatigued. Your neck, your back. I mean, it, it's definitely it's a lot of work. Riding on streets like this is fine, right? But if you are trying to do trails, it's not a dirt bike. I'll, I'll remind you that it's not a dirt bike. It's a it's a fun in between for doing asphalt, gravel, rocks. It's not made to shred over hills and stuff. It's just made 
to get your Fade to be have fun and do it cheap and very easily. Ed, Ed wants to sell his seven or his ten right now after seeing this and writing it, seeing how much how easy it was. And honestly, it's cool because it makes you slow down. It makes you take everything in. You're not spending so much time worried about keeping the bar straight and having your bike lay down in a corner and smash you on some rocks. You can kind of just focus more on on just the scenery and, and your mission on where you're going. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, comment below if you want to see some more 150 footage. I think I'll probably toss this thing on the dyno. I, re I know it's really lean. You can hear it knocking. I'm gonna toss on the dyno, see where it falls, and then start with probably just doing a jet kit, maybe a filter. I may put a, 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 some stuff up on the website. Cheaper than a Grom, cheaper than a Monkey. It's honestly only about a thousand dollars more than a Navi, and you're able to do 65 miles an hour and do all the stuff that I just did and get better fuel economy. That's not a bad deal. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think on all this in the bike and let me know what you want to see if you have one share your experience so happy riding enjoy the rest of your guys's uh weekend if that's when you're watching